Good morning, how's everybody doing today? I'm glad that you guys are back worshiping with us again today. We're finishing up our series on new beginnings. And I wanna share with you a scripture. This is, this is my favorite story out of the entire Bible. I know there's a lot of stories in the Bible, but this is the one that just makes a major difference for me. Uh, today's sermon title is entitled, What a Difference a Day Makes. Let's stop and pray this morning. Our Father and our God, we thank you for this day. We thank you for bringing us here. Lord, we recognize that you are doing something fantastic in our life today, and we open our lives to you in Jesus' name, amen. Our scripture today comes from Mark, Mark chapter 10. And the story that I wanna share with you today starts in verse number 46 of Mark chapter 10. Let me read it to you as we get started. It says, and they came to Jericho, and as he went out of Jericho with his disciples and a great number of people, blind Bartimaeus sat by the highway side begging. This is an interesting story because in Jesus's day, there were no social service agencies. There were no places where people could, could go and receive help. What they actually did was family members or the individual themselves would, would station themselves along the road uh, at the gates of a road where people, at the gates of a city where people were coming into the city or going out of the city. Sometimes they would station themselves at the church uh, or at the temple so that somebody either coming into the city or going into the temple would recognize them or somebody coming out of the city or out of the temple would give them something and they would sit there and they would beg. That's what's happening with Bartimaeus. Now the Bible doesn't tell us how long he's been in this condition. It doesn't tell us even how he got to this place. But it's interesting that, that as the sun rose in the morning, Bartimaeus found himself sitting in his spot. He's been sitting in that spot every day for a while now. And everybody knows that, that that's his spot. Every morning he's there and, and he gets up and he believes that, that this day is going to be just like yesterday. People are going to come into the city of Jericho or people are going to go out of the city of Jericho. And he's going to try to have someone give him what he needs to sustain him for that day. Maybe somebody's going to drop a few coins in his cup. Or maybe somebody's going to come by and drop a crust of bread on the inside of his cup. But Bartimaeus is totally dependent on the goodness of other people. Other people who are going to help him to be able to just get through the day by their generosity. Man, it's kind of like what we see every day now when we're going places and we see homeless individuals there and someone will come up and say, hey, have you got a dollar or you got a quarter that you can spare? They are the Bartimaeuses of today. They are those individuals that, that somehow or another God has placed in our path so that we can make a difference in their lives. But wait a minute. It's so they can also make a difference in our lives. And so Bartimaeus is in his spot. He's, he's sitting there and in his mind, he believes that today is going to be just like yesterday. But the ironic thing is, every single day, we have no idea how God's going to use us to change somebody else's life. And in the process of changing somebody else's life, our lives become changed also. Hey, look at the next part of the verse. Verse number 47 it says, as he's sitting by the wayside at Jericho, it says he hears that it is Jesus of Nazareth that is coming out of the city. Bartimaeus is sitting there. He's, he's in his spot and, and he's saying, hey, what's that noise? He, 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 he can't see, but he can hear. And so he, he leans over and he asks the person sitting next to him. He says, what's all that noise? What's, what's that commotion? What's going on? And somebody else says, it's that teacher. You know the one they're talking about, that, that young preacher, the one from Nazareth. It's, it's Jesus of Nazareth. He's, he's leaving Jericho. And something on the inside of Bartimaeus, Bartimaeus, man, it just explodes. How do we know? 
Because look at the next part of verse number 47. It says, and when he hears that it is Jesus of Nazareth, he begins to cry out and say, Jesus, thou son of David, have mercy on me. Hey, isn't it interesting that, that, God, that Bartimaeus recognizes that Jesus has this connection with God. And so the very first thing he asks for is mercy. Man, Bartimaeus may be blind, but he's not stupid. He recognizes the same thing that you do and I do, and that is that every single day of our lives, the thing that we cry out most for is mercy. You know, mercy is an interesting thing. Mercy is you getting what you don't deserve from God. In other words, we've all sinned, and so we deserve to have death, and yet mercy shows up and says, give him another chance. Bartimaeus is sitting here by the road going out of Jericho, and he recognizes that Jesus of Nazareth is coming out of Jericho, and he knows that if he's ever going to have any chance to get anything or his life is ever going to be renewed and be different, it's going to be happening with this person called Jesus. And so he begins to scream. The text tells us that he screams at the top of his voice, Jesus, thou son of David, have mercy on me. Thou son of David. Isn't it ironic that before the multitude and all the people, Bartimaeus connects Jesus up with the greatest king that had ever lived in Israel's history, and that was David. He, he draws this connection. We have no idea how he figured that out, but there's something working in his life that makes him make those connections. And he says, son of David, have mercy on me. Verse number 48 reminds us of something interesting. Verse 48 says that, and many charged him that he should hold his peace but he cried more and greater and louder, thou son of David, have mercy on me. Hey, isn't it interesting that whenever we're trying to do the right thing, whenever we're trying to move closer to God, whenever we're trying to connect our will up with God's will for our lives and move into our destinies, there are always those people who will show up who will try to stop us from getting there. I mean, think about it. This poor pitiful blind man is sitting by the road. He cries out to God. And as he's crying out to God, people show up and say, Hush that noise. Be quiet. Shut up. Wow. People like me, we spend our days trying to get people closer to God. And here this guy is, the spirit is working in his life, the spirit is trying to move him closer to God and usher him to God, and well-meaning people step in the gap and say, you be quiet, God don't have time for you. Hey, have you ever heard that before? That God's not interested in you? Don't worry about praying because God's not interested in what you have to say anyway. Ever heard that? Hey, have you ever heard Satan whisper in your ear? and say, hey, you've gone too far this time. You've sinned and God is through with you, so there's no need to pray. God will never forgive you for this, so just be quiet and just leave. How many times has the devil used this tool in your life and in my life to say, hey, you've gone too far this time? you said the wrong thing, you've done the wrong thing, you've sinned one time too many, and God is through with you. You know, even as a Christian, that's some people's biggest fear is that, wow, I've messed up so much this time that not even God can save. Me. We're in the midst of this coronavirus thing and people are walking around so afraid and so scared as if the coronavirus is so large that it's got God scared and he doesn't know what to do. There's always going to be somebody or something that's going to show up in your life, 
to try to discourage you or to, to make you believe that God's not interested in you. Some of you right now, man, when you told somebody you were going to be uh, dialing in and you were going to be watching this sermon this week, some friend or family member told you, why do you waste your time listening to that crazy preacher? People try to discourage us and move us from our blessing and move us from our destinies. The ironic thing is, we've got to be careful who we listen to and who we allow to give us advice. Other people don't know your story. You know, it's amazing. They didn't know Bartimaeus' story. Bartimaeus has been sitting there. He's blind. He can't see. We don't know if he became blind as an adult or he was born blind, but the scripture doesn't tell us. And yet they're telling him, you forget about your only hope and you stay in your place. How many times? How many times in your life and in my life have people tried to stop us from moving into our destinies, from becoming the, the men and women and boys and girls that God has ordained us to be. I remember as a kid, there was this older lady in the church that I grew up in that I really admired and I really respected. And one day she saw me doing something and it wasn't even me, it was somebody else, but I got blamed for it, yet this really is true. And it's amazing because she walked up to me and she simply said, you're nothing and you're never going to become anything. I'm going to tell you, those words cut me to the spirit. And for years, I mean literally years, I had let that stuff into my spirit and it kept me from becoming who God wanted me to be. But more importantly, those words acted like a wall and blocked me from the destiny that God had for me. But the ironic thing is that I love about God is that God will never leave us there even though we take those words into our spirit and, and walls begin to build up and, and we think that we're not gonna reach our destiny whenever we search for God because the scripture reminds us when you call upon me, I will answer. And so Bartimaeus is sitting by the road. People are saying, man, shut up, stop talking. And Bartimaeus, the text says, screams even louder. And let me tell you something. Whenever, whenever you call upon God or you go searching for God, it doesn't matter what you've done and where you've been, God will always show up always show up. How do I know? Look at verse number 49 of Mark chapter 10. It's interesting. It says, and Jesus stood still. Did you hear that? People were moving around and, and they're on their way out of the city and Jesus just comes to a screeching stop. Bible says he stood still watch this it says he commanded him to be called and they called Bartimaeus and said to him hey be of good cheer the master's calling for you man do you recognize that no matter what our situation is, no matter what we've been through, no matter what we've been doing, if we will stop and just call upon God, he will always respond to us. Don't listen to the lie that people tell you that God's not interested in somebody like you. You come from the wrong part of town. Your family has no spirituality. So how are you going to have some spirituality? You got to do like Bartimaeus and block them out and stop listening to them. Because God is preparing for Bartimaeus a unique opportunity. And the same thing he's doing for you and he's doing for me. Think about it. He stops moving forward. God calls for Bartimaeus. And the interesting thing in this text to me is that the same people who were saying, shut up and stop that noise. God's not interested in you. Now they switch their tone and they say, hey, he's calling for you. That reminds me that people are fickle. You got to be careful who you listen to. 
because they'll give you praises one day and they will be the exact same people that will turn against you the next day. Bartimaeus gets up, the text tells us, throws off his garment in verse number 50, and he comes to Jesus. It is amazing that verse 50 says, he cast away his garment, rose and came to Jesus. Now I'm gonna tell you, I read this story multiple times and I never saw that verse before. In other words, Bartimaeus gets up and he, he throws off his jacket and he throws away his mat. He's signifying there that he's not coming back to that spot anymore. Something is about to take place in his life. When we come to God and God is preparing to do something in our lives, we're never going to be the way we used to be. We're never going to go back to where we used to go. Think about it. Once you give your life to Christ, it is so difficult for you to go back and do the same things that you used to do because you have that sense of, of being uncomfortable with that. And so verse 50 says that Bartimaeus gets up and throws off his stuff. He, he leans over to the person that's been his, his, comp his, his companion that's been sitting there with him all this time. And he simply says, hey, you can have my spot, man. I'm not coming back here anymore. Something is about to happen. I am going to connect with Jesus and he is going to do something in my life. I am never coming back to this spot again. And then verse 51, this is where we've been trying to get to. Verse 51 shows up and Bartimaeus is standing there. He can't see Jesus, but he, he hears the voice. And Jesus answers and says to him, watch this. What would you that I should do for you? Hey, what do you want me to do? You've been calling my name all this time. Tell me what you want. Man, it's like a, a soothing voice of a mother speaking to their small child and saying, I hear you calling my name. Tell me what you want. Tell me what you need from me. Now, the first time I saw that, that sounded so ridiculous. The man's blind. What do you mean? What does he need? Jesus asks this question. What he's simply doing is trying to find out where the man's priorities are. Think about it. Bartimaeus could have said, you know what, I'd like to have you put a bunch of money in my checking account so I don't have to come here anymore. Hey, could you give me like your American Express card so I can go and have like a nice dinner? It's kind of cold. I wish I had a better coat. My coat's kind of moth-eaten. Jesus says, what do you want from me? It is as if God is walking over and handing Bartimaeus a, a blank check with his signature on the bottom and telling Bartimaeus, fill in the amount. Whatever you want, this is what I am going to give you. Stop for just a second. If God was to show up in your living room today and walk over to you and say, what do you want from me? I'm going to take out my checkbook. I'm just going to sign my name on the bottom. I'm going to give you a check. Tell me what you want me to fill in the amount for. And whatever you ask for, that's what I'm going to give you. Have you ever thought about that? Man, so many times we spend so much time asking and getting insignificant stuff. God is trying to force Bartimaeus to look down on the inside into the desires of his heart and really speak about what's really important to him. Look what Bartimaeus says. It's very simple. He says, I'd like to be able to see. 
Now, you know that, and I know that, and that's probably what we would say, but, but how many times when, when God steps into our lives, we start talking about insignificant and surface stuff rather than really going to the crux of the problem? You see, he's forcing Bartimaeus to think about something more than just a few coins in a cup or a crust of bread just to get through today. Bartimaeus' mind could have been focused on just getting through today. God's looking at the rest of his life. You see, if Bartimaeus can see, he can go out and earn his own money and buy his own bread. How many times do you and do I when God presents a unique opportunity to us, we ask for insignificant things. Bartimaeus says, I'd love to be able to see. And look at what Jesus says in verse number 52. He says, go your way. Your faith has made you whole. That word whole in the original language doesn't just mean that Bartimaeus can now see. It means that everything that has been troubling him on the inside, it's all taken care of. What a difference a day can make. Yesterday, Bartimaeus was trapped in darkness. And today, he's made whole. He stops, he recognizes the opportunity when it shows up. And this is what I want to leave you with today. Is that every single day of your life, it is an opportunity to have your life transformed and your life changed. Today. You're listening to this sermon, not because you just thought you wanted to, but it is something that God is going to use to transform and to change you and make a total difference in the rest of your life. It's not just about today. God is going to use these words from this sermon today to change you and usher you into the destiny that he always had for you. Now, this is what I need to have you do. After you listen to this sermon, if it's something that you believe that God has used to touch your life, I need to have you send the link so that somebody else's life can be changed also. Let me pray for you. Our Father and our God, we thank you for this day. Lord, we thank you for coming by where we were sitting and taking time to give us not just what we wanted, but give us what we needed. We thank you for making us new, giving us this new beginning so that we can be who you want us to be. We thank you for the destinies that you have for each one of us. We thank you for keeping and blessing us in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you. Have an awesome week.